The murder of Katarzyna Zoda occurred at the end of 1998 in Krakow, Poland. The victim was a 23-year-old female student, who was attending J. Gielonian University. Investigators and experts from other countries were called to assist in solving the crime, including the FBI. Police made the first arrest in 2017 after discovering new evidence. As of September 2019, the suspect remains in custody while investigators continue to gather evidence. In 1998, Katarzyna Zoda began studying religion at J. Gielonian University, located in nearby Krakow. According to friends, she was a nice, although sad and withdrawn person. She had suffered from depression since the death of her father in 1996. During her time at the university, she changed her field of study twice. After her first semester as a psychology student, she briefly attended a history course before settling on religious studies. On November 12, 1998, Katarzyna was due to meet her mother at the psychiatric clinic in Nauahuta, where she had been treated for her depression. She never made it to the appointment. Later that day, Katarzyna's mother attempted to file a missing persons report at the local police station but was told to wait. On January 6, 1999, while on the Vistula, the crew of the Elk Pusher Tug found a piece of foreign matter on the ship. After examination, it was discovered to be human skin. DNA tests indicated it belonged to Katarzyna. On 14 January, Katarzyna's right leg was also recovered from the river. In May 1999, the forensic medicine unit in Krakow received a corpse of a man with a severed and scalped head. The killer turned out to be the son of the victim, originally from the Caucasus, Vladimir W. Prior to the arrest, he was seen in a mask made of skin pulled from the head of his own father. Initially, investigators suspected that Vladimir committed Katarzyna's murder, however, no evidence was found to support it. He was later charged with his father's murder and sentenced to 25 years in prison. After a few years, he was transferred to a prison in Russia at his own request. A year later, the investigation was formally dropped because the perpetrator had not been discovered, but police officers involved in the case continued investigating credible leads. In 2012, thanks to advances in the field of forensic research and cooperation with experts, the prosecutor's office resumed the investigation. A team of police officers from the X-Files, Cold Case Unit, was brought in. The exhumation and additional autopsy of Katarzyna's remains were ordered. Experts from the 3D Expertise Laboratory of the Wrocław Medical University created a model of injuries inflicted on the victim. They concluded that the attacker had used a sharp tool to wound his victim on her neck, armpit and groin, to inflict pain and cause her to bleed to death. In 2014, an FBI representative for Europe created a psychological profile of the suspect, pointing to his sadistic tendencies. In 2016, Investigators consulted with University of Coimbra Professor Duarte Nuno Vieira, a Portuguese specialist in forensics and UN expert in the field of signs of torture on the human body. He confirmed that Katarzyna was tortured before her death and that the perpetrator was probably trained in martial arts, specifically one particular, undisclosed variation. On October 4, 2017, 19 years after the murder, police arrested 52-year-old Robert J. in Krakow's Kazimierz district. Investigators searched his apartment and found blood in the bathroom. As a result, the bath and frame were secured for further testing. He was a person of interest in 1999 but had not been arrested. Robert J. fit the psychological profile as he was trained in martial arts, knew the victim, visited the victim's grave and had a history of harassing women. He had previously worked in a dissecting lab, where he dealt with human corpses. He also worked at the Krakow Institute of Zoology, where he could observe the process of preparing animal skins. His employment was terminated the day after he killed all of the Institute's rabbits during his shift. Robert J. couldn't explain his actions. The police detained him after a letter from the suspect's friend. The contents of the letter are a closely guarded secret of the investigation. Robert J. was charged with aggravated murder with particular cruelty. He maintains that he did not know Katarzyna Zoda. The Court of Appeal agreed to extend his detention until September 6, 2018 while investigators gathered evidence. As of September 2019, Robert J. has not yet been released. Investigators requested a closed trial. The following is from a post on r slash unresolved mysteries. Who killed and skinned Katarzyna Zoda in 1998 in Krakow? Poland? Unresolved murder. Some of the names have only been disclosed as initials due to Polish privacy laws. On a cold winter morning on January 7, 1999, Miroslav M., a tugboat operator opened a hatch on the Loss, a barge pusher on the Vistula, to remove what was stuck in the propeller since last evening. He expected to find a tire or a tree branch, but what he saw was something different. He wondered what the object was, of nondescript, pale color and sack-like appearance 
when he felt a foul smell and noticed a human ear. As it later turned out, what I'm found were the remains of 23-year-old religion knowledge student, Katarzyna Zoeta. Specifically, her skin, neatly cut away at the thighs and neck, reaching only as far as the left ear, without the face and arms. Her nipples were also absent. There was an oblique seam going from under the right breast to the left shoulder. The coroner said the body had been in the water for about two or three weeks before she was found. Pieces of her sweater were also at the scene. A week later, Katarzyna's leg was found near a hydroelectric dam also on the Vistula, among some floating litter and tree branches. No other remains of her have ever been found. Some of her clothes have, pieces of jeans and a flannel shirt with a square cutout. Katarzyna had been missing since November 12, 1998. She was a loner, who had few friends, always sat alone during lectures, and lived with her mother. She had depression and, at one point in the past, had tried to commit suicide. Her mother became worried when she didn't show up to a doctor's appointment to which they were going to go together. It was discussed that it was a copycat murder based on Silence of the Lambs. The police were doing their best, since the profilers stated there was a high possibility that it was only the first in a series of murders. And indeed, the next murder happened. On May 31st, around 1 p.m., the Krakow police received a phone call. An elderly man said there was a murder at his house in a tiny village near the city and he believed his grandson was the murderer. In the house's basement, a corpse was hanging upside down from the ceiling. The victim, a 50-year-old man, had been beheaded in the skin of his head and face was found at the scene. It was sewn to form a mask. The head was found outside the house. The murderer was a Russian immigrant, Vladimir W. The victim, his father would allege. Interrogation revealed even more shocking details. Vladimir wore his father's face and clothes for a whole day and pretended to be him in front of his grandfather, who didn't see very well. The motive, he said, was the hatred he felt towards his father after he cheated on his wife and left her with nothing in Nalchik, Russia to pursue a new life in Poland with his son and father. It is possible that Vladimir knew Kasia. They both studied psychology on the Uniwersytet Jagiellonski, albeit they weren't in the same class. He started in 1992, she did in 1993 but dropped out after a year. He did not confess to killing her. He is currently spending his 25-year sentence in a Russian jail. In Krakow, there have only been three cases ever of someone being skinned after death. The last one happened in 1983. Jenin, a perfectly normal citizen, one day decided to murder and skin his wife and teenage son. He then tried to dispose of the bodies by tossing them into the Vistula piece by piece. He was arrested before he completed his plan and committed to a mental institution indeterminately. His poor physical health led to him being granted parole during the time of Katarzyna's death, but the police determined he couldn't have done that for the above reason. Investigation revealed that Katarzyna skipped her classes for two weeks before the disappearance. In fact, she disappeared during one of these truancies, she was supposed to go to the doctors right after class. This points to the possibility of a secret relationship. Her friends only knew of one male friend, a fellow Grateful Dead fan whom she had met at an event where people sold each other used music CDs and cassettes. He had an alibi. In 2000, DNA belonging to another person was discovered on Kasha's skin. It was compared to all the suspects and persons of interest in the case, including known sexual offenders, but to no avail. The case was reopened in 2012. Traces of relatively rare plant species were found on the sweater which the police believe could pinpoint the location of the crime. Also, it has been revealed that Katarzyna has been tortured before death. At it, in accordance with all recent sources, the victim's name was Zoeda, not Zawada, as indicated by most sources available during the creation of this post. Zawada is a very common Polish name of which Zoeda is probably a corruption, so my sources might have seen it as a typo and therefore corrected it. In 2000, DNA belonging to another person was discovered on Cassia's skin. They found usable DNA on a body that had been in the water for two to three weeks. That is unbelievable. No, literally, I don't believe it. Simply a horrific case that makes me wonder if Jan N might not have been more capable than he seemed to that parole board. The articles in Polish call it biological traces not belonging to the victim. I'm no expert, but wouldn't say a hair be enough to get DNA samples? That's one of the most messed up real life happenings I've ever read.